Hey, so I wound up booking flights. I'm going to Ireland with you. Oh, shit! I know. It, we're leaving tomorrow. So my, my game plan is I'm going to take uh, the D850 with us and try to do a review. All right, so here's what I'm taking with me. I just have the small Tamarack bag. I'm trying to travel as light as possible. I have the, uh, the D850 with a Tamron 24 to 70 lens. And then I am bringing a just standard uh, 50 millimeter 1.4. Normally I would travel with the GH5. This is what we record all of our videos with, but I know I am not gonna wanna carry both of these cameras with me as I run around. So let's uh, pack this all up and get out of here. Since I always travel with my iPhone, I wanted to do a quick video comparison test. Now, you might imagine a DSLR will look way better than a cell phone in low light, but in bright light, they almost look identical. But as you can see, there's something seriously wrong with the lens's optical stabilization, which made the iPhone footage much more usable. Funny story here, the night before when I packed the Tamron lens, I actually packed the Sigma lens because somebody put the Tamron lens cap on the Sigma lens. Now from our test, the Sigma lens has some of the worst optical stabilization, and I would have preferred to have the Tamron lens, but I guess I'm gonna have to shoot with the Sigma throughout this entire review. So now that I got that disclaimer out of the way, let's get back to the camera review. As a traveling content creator, I'm really excited about the new time-lapse movie function. Traditionally, a time-lapse is created by taking a bunch of still photos and then combining them into a video. I'll discuss the problem I have with this method later in the review, but by using this new time-lapse movie mode, the D850 will create a time-lapse with one click of the shutter instead of having to take hundreds of photographs. Pro photo tip, if you find yourself getting awful reflections when shooting through glass, try wrapping your lens with a dark piece of fabric. One strange thing about this video time-lapse function is that the image preview hardly shows up with intervalometers less than, say, six seconds. Here I have a one second exposure with about four seconds between shots, and you can hardly see the resulting image. This is a huge problem if you're shooting a sunset or sunrise and you need to check your exposure. Nikon, you really need to fix this. As you can see, the iPhone doesn't do so well in low light. Let's now talk about a new feature in this camera, the electronic stabilization. As far as I know, the D850 is Nikon's first full-frame camera to include digital stabilization, but you can also find it on the D500. Here you can see some extreme high ISO tests with and without stabilization turned on. It doesn't look too bad here, but ideally the best stabilization is having both the lens and in-body stabilization working together. This is exactly how the Panasonic GH5 camera works and the footage looks amazing. If you're simply trying to handhold a shot, the D850 does pretty well with its electronic stabilization, but as you'll soon see, things get extremely wonky when panning and walking. So where are we going? <laughs> Everywhere. Where are we going? Everywhere. <laughs> So we're driving on the other side of the road. Oh my god. And Lauren does not really <laughs> know how to drive on the other side of the road. <laughs> and then they have these roundabouts. They do have these stop signs here. Oh my god. These I'm just literally actually... just following this other car. So the good news is we safely made it to Cork. The bad news. So I was trying to set up this time lapse and I accidentally put my wallet here to support the camera and I accidentally hit the lens cap and it went over. It's there floating. Having been tricked by the lens cap already, I was glad to see that thing float away. The next feature I wanted to explore was the camera's dynamic range and less than perfect light. So for this shot, I used the uh, Nikon D850's uh, live view and tilting screen. But the girls here, they have a different approach. You're using film. You're using film and you're having to meet her. I need an iPhone pick of this. And you've climbed the wall. <laughs> Or you just use live view and tilt the screen and, and get it without climbing up there. This image is a great example of how much dynamic range you can capture with these modern sensors. What used to require maybe three or five bracketed shots really can be done with one single file. It's pretty amazing. Lauren was kind enough to share the photo she took on her medium format film camera 
and it's absolutely mind-blowing how much more detail there is off this 46 megapixel sensor. And what's more, with a little alien skin post-processing, I can even make the D850 look like crappy film. Go ahead, leave your hate mail in the comments below. What's great about the D850 is it has a self-cleaning sensor, so if you get anything on the sensor, it just cleans itself. Um, unlike... Shut up! What are you doing here? We're cleaning. Cleaning off dust. Cleaning the dust off? So what's really nice about this silent time-lapse feature is that by shooting video instead of shooting stills, your shutter isn't changing, your aperture isn't changing, the sensor is just staying open. And it's allowing you to not only get silent time lapses, which is nice when you're in a quiet place like this, but you also get the ability to have time lapses that have no flicker. And when the aperture is constantly opening and shutting and the mirror is opening and shutting, a lot of times you get that, that extra vibration, that extra movement. And so this is a feature I'm really excited that Nikon has added to this camera. The only problem is, is you can't always see the back of the camera. So right now this time lapse is gonna be pretty cool because I have the sky up here. But I have no idea what it would be doing if the sun was getting dark and all of a sudden the uh, the time lapse is, you know, black, which is definitely nice to see when you're doing a day to night. So pretty excited about this feature. After spending the afternoon in Cork, it was time to drive across the country to Dublin. Here is another example of just how amazing the D850 is in low light compared to the iPhone. There's absolutely no comparison and this is exactly why you would want to shoot video or stills with a full frame sensor. Now I don't know how the girls pulled this off, Holy shit. but this suite was pretty pimped out. That's a good sign. The James suite. Yeah, let's just stay here. Oh my god. Look at this. Don't touch any of those. They're all in sensors. Now I know what you're all thinking. Patrick, stop talking about video and show us the high ISO photos. Well, the D810 was probably already king of high ISO for a camera like this, but I have to say the D850 is even better. I'm gonna let you guys compare all these high res files in the link below, but for me personally, I would not hesitate to shoot this at 6400 or even 12,800. It's just that good. Now this camera is no Sony a7S, few are, but damn, this is pretty unbelievable for a 46 megapixel camera. As you can imagine, Ireland can be pretty rainy, which was perfect for this next test. All right, so we're gonna do the ultimate extreme weather time lapse. We're here in the rain and I have this uh, D850 set up. And the goal here is just to do a two second exposure in time lapse mode for about four minutes and get all the buses and people walking by. Of course the camera's gonna get soaking wet, but I hope that the lens stays dry because I have the lens hood on it. And with the Sigma lens, it's also, uh, I believe, weatherproof. Fingers crossed. This test is not for the faint of heart, but I've put these Nikon cameras through a lot of rain in my day. I have no doubt this camera's gonna be totally fine. I might have to go to the bathroom and dry it off, so I'm not carrying a wet camera though. So we've made it to Trinity College. Kind of a gloomy day to be doing a camera review, but uh, the idea is to go inside, shoot this library, do a couple ISO tests. I'm sure the camera's gonna do fine. At this point, I feel pretty comfortable with it. I think it's the best DSLR I've ever shot. Lauren, how's your camera holding up? My ancient film camera. Well, you gotta pull it out. No. Why not? Because I can't get it wet. You can't get it wet. Well, this one's definitely wet. Yeah, but the dynamic range on my camera is way better than yours. You hear that? She says her camera has better dynamic range at ISO 400. I'm not even sure she's going to be able to shoot inside this uh, if it ain't broke, don't library. Fix it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Get a film camera. Don't get a D850. <laughs> you can't visit Dublin without checking out the iconic library at Trinity College. And I was really excited to see how this camera would perform in such a challenging lighting environment.
All of these images were shot at ISO 6400, which just barely gave me an 80th of a second at 2.8. Having a fast aperture lens is crucial because the college doesn't let you use flash or tripods. And I could tell even the security officer was skeptical of this camera's low light performance. Unfortunately, Lauren's camera with daylight balance film had to be converted to black and white, but as you can see, the D850 looks great in both color and black and white. While I was filming some of the panning shots for this video, I noticed something strange happening with the camera's digital stabilization. Most cameras don't do well with panning movements like this, but this was by far some of the worst jitter I've ever seen. Maybe if the stabilization on the lens was working correctly, this would look better, but as far as I'm concerned, this is completely unusable footage. In this shot, I turned off the stabilization, and you can see it looks so much better. So, my battery just died. I've been out here shooting for just a few hours, and I came out with probably half of a battery. Um, I've been shooting a lot of 4K video and a lot of slow motion video, plus the RAW and JPEG. I don't feel like I've been doing an excessive amount of shooting, really. I've probably taken 100, 200 pictures and maybe, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes of video. So I don't know why the battery's already died, but it seems like the battery is not quite as good as it used to be in previous cameras, but then again, I wasn't doing tons of time-lapse, 4K video, or super slow-mo. So it's hard to say what battery is better, but I would advise if you're gonna be walking around the streets like I am, you have extra batteries. So I have to go back to the apartment, get another battery, charge this one up, and then head back out. It's probably gonna be night by then, but I'll have to do some other tests. Overall, a little disappointed in the battery life, but I gotta play around with it a little bit more. After a quick recharge, I wanted to test the camera's custom white balance. Now, for reasons I don't quite understand, most cameras only let you drop the white balance down to 2500 Kelvin. In some situations, this is still too warm, but by taking a custom white balance reading off of a napkin, I was able to get a much more pleasing color temperature. Now, in Lightroom, you can expand these white balance options even further, which leads me with the question, why can't we just have these expanded settings directly in the camera? So the inevitable happened. The film shooter asked to use the D850. I don't even know how to change the ISO. There's a button on top that says ISO. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you're already at 1600. Yeah, I'm at 1600, which is beyond oh, what- this blends out wide? Yeah, you gotta go the other way. It's weird, the Sigma's backwards, but. Super weird. It's totally weird, but it'll get the job done. It's what? It's pretty? Let's see. Ooh, look at that. We'll have to compare that with the film. Well, I don't have a wide enough lens today. Oh, that'll do it, so. The digital's a hit. So one thing I've never liked about Nikon's time-lapse feature, their intervalometer, is it seems like it's very complicated to figure out how long something is actually going to last. So as you can see here, I'm doing a 1.6 second exposure, and then I have a one second interval and I'm running this for six minutes, the camera tells me it appears that this should be a 15 second time lapse. Yet when you do the math, if you shoot for six minutes, really at uh, you know three seconds with the interval and the long exposure, you're going to get five second time lapse. So I'm not exactly sure where the 15 second comes in. I don't know why it shows that on the back of the screen, but having done this, over many, many Nikon DSLRs, I can tell you that the time-lapse uh, feature in the, the actual output number has never made any sense. It's very, very confusing. My recommendation is to simply set the time much longer than you think, do the manual calculation on your phone, and then set a timer on your phone so that after two, three, four, five minutes, you know that your time-lapse is the correct length. So one feature I was really excited about with the D850 is the new focus peaking. As far as I know, this is one of the first times that Nikon's put that into a camera, at least one of this caliber. But unfortunately, I've had a really hard time figuring out how to get it to work. I've read a lot online, and basically you have to have both your camera and your lens into manual focus, which is kind of annoying. There's no, like, override. And it also only seems to work for me in the photo mode, which is really silly because I feel like the photo mode works really well with autofocus. I'm a huge fan of that. Um, I really want it for video. And what I've read online is it only works in 1080 and it doesn't work in 4K. It also doesn't work with slow motion features. So 
In theory, it should work at 24 frames a second at 1080, but I can't even get it to work at all with video. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it's definitely not as good of a feature as you might see with the Sony's or the Fuji's, the other mirrorless cameras that have focus peaking for years. Um, it's exciting to have it in this camera, but it just seems like they need a firmware update that really gives you the full functionality of it. So I'm gonna continue to play with it and see if I can figure it out. But for video, it's really nice to be able to see what you're focusing on since you're looking at the back of the screen. If you're using the optical viewfinder, I feel like autofocus works well enough to where I'm not using manual focus to begin with. Should I take a photo of this too? Yes. Will this appeal to our uh, female audience? Yes. Very Why? Much so. Because bitches love flowers. Bitches love flowers. So here's the flower test. So this is the large and small raw test. I'm gonna put these online, you guys can download them and look. I would like to think that small raw is a good option if you wanna shoot weddings and, and you don't wanna shoot at the full 46 megapixels. But who knows, maybe this smaller raw file isn't as good as a regular raw file. Let's find out. Despite what I've read online, the differences here to me are very negligible and these smaller RAW options can be extremely useful. It wouldn't be a camera review without a bacon donut. Or pistachio donut. Or what is this thing? Bailey's Bliss. Bailey's Bliss. I'm starting my drinking early. Yay. Next up, the Guinness Tour. So while I've been here in the Guinness uh, factory, I've been trying to use the Wi-Fi feature. Uh, Nikon has the SnapBridge app and the idea is that you could connect your camera to your phone and then instantly download pictures and then you could use them for the web or you know put them on social media. The problem I'm having, and I've had this with all the SnapBridge cameras from Nikon, is that it just doesn't work that well. Um, I finally got it to work halfway through this tour, but it's only downloading certain pictures. It's very slow and clunky, and I just feel like it's not as smooth as it probably should be. So while it's cool that this camera has Wi-Fi, I can't say for certain that it's the best Wi-Fi I've ever used on a camera. I know a lot of photographers might not care about the new video modes in this camera, but if you plan on using this camera for video, the new 120 frames per second full HD option is incredibly useful, even if it's just for shooting beer. The tilting screen is also nice because you can stabilize the camera while still being able to view the screen. I will say the problem with DSLRs is that average people do not know how to focus and take pictures. Whereas the Instamatic camera, everyone yes. can push the button and make the picture. Yes, these are great. I actually think the Instamatic won. Yes, they're it, great. It, that picture is better than this picture. Yeah. She also gets to develop pictures. I don't get to do that. The final night in Dublin was filled with a lot of hazy memories, but I learned two things. One, kiss me, I'm Irish, is to be taken literally. And two, the Irish love this song. I don't normally take a DSLR to the bar, but I think it handled the shenanigans pretty well. Dublin's been an amazing experience. I'd love to come back, but we have to head to the West Coast now to Galway and check out some cliffs before we head on a flight back home. So let's see what we can capture this next uh, few days. And hopefully the weather stays as good as it is right now. Fingers crossed. So this is Galway at three in the morning. I feel like I'm on Bourbon Street right now. Like this is not what I was expecting, but in a good way because <laughs> There's just so much going on. There's such a energy in the air. I've never seen anything like this in my life. We're outside the McDonald's. It is the most jumping spot ever. Trash everywhere. Glass on the ground. I have to say, this is crazier than New York City. This is crazier than any town I've been in anywhere in the world. 
Galway, Ireland. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Clearly the review has stopped. There's no testing of cameras tonight. <laughs> Tomorrow we're gonna go to the cliffs. How are the cliffs? Lost to crack. Cliff some more. You want to cliff some more? Yeah, how is it? Oh, on relay. What are we going to see tomorrow? Cliffs. We're going to see cliffs, sea stacks. Sea stacks, Chambolos. cliffs. Is it going to be good? It's going to be good. It's, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Enjoy your trip. Welcome to Ireland. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Ireland, everybody. For this part of the review, I think I'm just going to try to do a proper landscape photo. I brought my trusty Benro tripod, and I haven't done anything on the tripod yet, so I figured, let's see what 46 megapixels can do when they're super stabilized. I have no idea if the weather's gonna work out, but we do have some nice clouds here and we will have a sunset that should illuminate the side of the cliff. So fingers crossed, let's hope this works out. Let's get on the road. So it's super peaceful out here. I'm like the only person shooting. It's really nice. Oh. More photographers. Well, don't stand exactly where I'm at. I'm not. So my idea was to come down here and try to shoot with the uh, super low ISO, which would allow me to increase my shutter speed and stop down to like F22 and potentially blur out the sky and the water. But unfortunately, the sky is so overcast, I don't think you're gonna see that. And this water is so still, I don't think you're gonna see that either. So we're gonna head down the road, find another location to shoot, and hopefully the sky improves a little bit better and I can do longer exposures and really see a drastic difference. But right now, it's just kind of a bleak scene, but eh, it's still gonna look pretty good. So we got all the way out here to the Cliff some more and we haven't actually gotten to the actual cliffs. We came out to this castle and it's beautiful to see. Don't get me wrong. It's so green out here. The weather is, it's chilly, but it's, it's a beautiful sight to see for sure. But unfortunately, it's not that great for photography. There's no sunlight giving any dimension to the photograph at all. The sky's overcast, which a lot of people think is great for photography. Um, I kind of find overcast light really boring. Now, another interesting feature on this camera is called silent live view photography. What this does is basically in live view, you can pull an image straight off the sensor without using the shutter or the mirror. So for landscapes, you can turn on a two second delay and you can take images instantly, silently, and because there's no moving parts, it should be the most stable capture possible. Now, wedding photographers will also love this because in the church during the ceremony, you can now take pictures that are completely silent. Keep in mind, this really only works for stationary subjects since there is a lot of rolling shutter with this method and you'll create a lot of distortion if you're photographing fast moving objects. There's still too much light right now to be able to do a super long exposure. And out here, I don't really have the ocean, so there's nothing that's really gonna blur anyway. So I've left the camera out here doing a time lapse. You'll be able to see that now, but we're gonna head over to the cliffs and see what most people come out here to look at. And I hope there's another photo opportunity at the actual cliffs and more. So of course, when we got back into the car, it started to rain. Now, this is what the cliffs and more is supposed to look like, but that's not the weather we got. The walk was treacherous, it was rainy, it was slippery, it was cold and windy. This was going to be a disaster. So I finally made it to the cliffs, and as you can see, the weather does not look anything like the postcards. So this is super sketchy. If you walk down this muddy path and climb up over these rocks, you can get to this muddy embankment, which literally goes right over the edge. And of course, I'm in the wrong shoes for this, but as you can see, the side of the cliff is right here where I have my camera set up. And now I'm, I'm simply just filming video, which I'll turn into a time lapse because I don't think you'll be able to see the water enough to warrant using a slow shutter speed. An incredible view, but super sketchy. And if you've gone online, they actually have videos of the cliff falling apart and breaking into the ocean. So it's never really fun to be on the edge like this because who knows what could happen. It is pretty exciting that this camera goes down to ISO 32 now, which in theory should allow you to do even longer shutters, which could blur clouds or blur the water. I really wish instead of focusing on the high ISO, a lot of these cameras would go even lower. 
Imagine how amazing it could be if your camera sensor could go to ISO 10 or 2, which would allow you to shoot still at f8, which is a good aperture for landscapes, but then you could potentially do two to 10 second exposures all in camera without having to use a neutral density filter. That would be absolutely amazing, but instead these camera manufacturers seem to just keep increasing the ISO higher and higher and higher and higher, but they're not taking the ISO down, in my opinion, far enough. In other news, this camera does do really well in horrible conditions. It's super cold out here. It's windy, it's rainy, there's even some sleet. So um, I have to say that these cameras do hold up really well in extreme conditions. All right, so I think that concludes the D850 test. It is way too dark out here and rainy. Nothing's turning out good. It's a horrible day. I honestly can't think of a better way to end this review than with a dead iPhone. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There was still one final photograph I wanted Lauren to take of me. And if you've seen my jumping photos around the world, you know exactly what I needed to do. Do not try this at home. Okay, do try this at home. Do not try this at the cliffs anymore. After a full week of running around Ireland, it was time to finally head back home. So I have to say it was really fun going to Ireland and testing this camera out. I have to admit I had not used this camera before, but having used all of the Nikon cameras before this model, it actually was pretty intuitive. Now obviously there was a lot of features this camera does that I was not able to explain in this video, but don't worry, I have another video coming up shortly where I talk a lot more about these other features. If you enjoy photography and want more content, including videos, head over to fstoppers.com and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below because we release videos like this every single week. Show me your moves, give me a dance move. He's got the moves like Jagger, he's got the moves like Jagger. Is that a Jagger move? Yeah. Like, he, has, he moves like he's been hit by a jaguar. Yeah. <laughs> Madness. 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 This is the craziest city in the entire world. It's gotta be. It's gotta be.